Yesterday, I was browsing through my very own Discord server, and my Discord server was a buzz. Everyone was talking about this new AI speech synthesis. People were talking about how it was shockingly good. And well, I just had to try it for myself, so I booted it up yesterday on the website, and yeah, it's really good. So I can't miss the opportunity to talk about it. I really need to talk about this speech synthesis website. So not only is the actual AI speech synthesis itself very, very good, but it actually has a few extra features that I want to discuss that make it even better. There's a lot of AI speech websites out there and not much room for competition. This one competes. So viewers, here we are on the main page. This is known as Eleven Labs. Of course, it's going to be linked right down below for you viewers at home, and there actually is a lot of free capability with this website. So let's take a look here at what Eleven Labs can do. First of all, as we were saying, it this is speech synthesis, so a lot of people might not be mind blown by speech synthesis, but I certainly was mind blown by this speech synthesis because it's indistinguishable from actual human conversation and it's just text to speech. I reviewed a really good AI voice changer a few months back and that was pretty mind blowing to hear, but this sounds better than that actual voice changer. So like when I'm using a voice changer, I'm actually providing it with a lot of information about how to say the words, right? This is just text and it's able to interpret the text and then create a completely realistic voice based off of it. There's no robotic weirdness to it that you'll see with stuff like uberduck.ai, and uberduck.ai is really good, but this is a lot better. You could narrate entire books with this thing, and it would not break a sweat. You wouldn't even notice that it's AI. Truly remarkable stuff. They've got a few different voices that you can pick from here. So we've got a few male and female voices. Oh, this custom voice known as Matt Vidpro. We'll take a look at that later. Anyways, let's try their default Adam character here. We've actually got some voice settings to change around what he might sound like. We'll just go ahead and set everything to the default here. The default 75% for both settings. And if I want to listen to this, I got to put some headphones on. To make this extra exciting, I'm just going to go ahead and have ChatGPT write us something. If you guys didn't see my last video, we talked all about AI text detection tools. So ChatGPT actually generated us some different test sentences. This one was pretty funny. It's an essay uh, about how much this guy loves bugs. So we'll just take this first sentence here and see what Eleven Labs does. Again, this is default settings, and we'll talk about how you can manipulate these settings to get different effects. We'll click generate here and it will begin to generate it. And the generation time, by the way, is very quick. It's maybe 15 seconds max. Let's take a listen to the audio. Bugs have always held a special place in my heart. From the moment I first discovered the intricate and fascinating world of insects, I was hooked. I cannot deny it. I am absolutely unapologetically obsessed with bugs. See, it's just the way he puts inflection into his voice. And I mean, I'm talking about it like this is an actual guy saying it because that's exactly what it sounds like. There is no denying that that sounds very, very human. It sounds what it really reminds me of uh, is I don't know if you guys remember, you know, being in school when they would put the, the CDs in with the, the reading of the books, like the whole class would have their book open and they would be reading something. That's what it sounds like. One of those book narrators from when you were in school. But it does sound just like someone speaking. Speaking it, it does not sound robotic or weird. I mean, he is definitely giving a lot of clarity and, and sounds like he's speaking and narrating something almost. But it's weird. This AI is able to pick up on the nuances of the text and decide where different inflections in his voice should be. Let's take a listen to another voice. Maybe the Adam voice is the only good one. Let's try a female voice. We'll go with Bella. Bugs have always held a special place in my heart. From the moment I first discovered the intricate and fascinating world of insects, I was hooked. I cannot deny it. I am absolutely unapologetically obsessed with bugs. It's so good. That one sounds better, to be honest. There's more inflection in her voice, and she really sounds quite passionate. It's frightening. It's really frightening how good this text-to-speech is getting, and Eleven Labs killed it with this technology. So, like I said earlier, these are the default settings here. If I take this top dial, which is known as the stability dial, and I turn it down a little bit, it's going to make the speech a little bit more expressive and variable, which could be really good but it can also make things sound more AI generated and unstable. So we're not going to turn it down too much. We'll probably put it at like 64 is good. And this clarity here makes the speech sound more clear. So yeah, let's go ahead and to see what we get out of this thing. Let's click generate. I assume this is going to take a lot longer to generate. Once upon a time, there was a washing machine named George Washington. 
George was a patriotic washing machine and always made sure to spin his loads with dignity and pride, just like the first president of the United States. One day, while washing a load of clothes, George discovered a delicious-looking cookie. He was so excited to try it, but before he could take a bite, five spiders appeared and started to climb all over him. George was terrified of spiders and tried to shake them off, but they wouldn't budge. Just then, Shrek the ogre stumbled upon the scene. Shrek was known for his bravery and strength, and he quickly sprang into action. With one swift motion, he brushed the spiders off of George and saved the day. As a thank you, George offered Shrek the cookie. Shrek, being the sweet ogre he was, gratefully accepted and took a big bite. The sweet, crumbly cookie was the best thing he had ever tasted, and he couldn't get enough. From that day on, Shrek and George Washington became fast friends. They would often spend their days washing clothes and enjoying cookies together. The five spiders, who were really just looking for a place to call home, found a new home on George's agitator and were happy to have such a delicious cookie factory nearby. And so, the friendship between a washing machine, a ogre, and five spiders lived happily ever after. They proved that it's not the species you are, but the kindness you show that truly matters. Wow, okay. I mean, okay. First off... It generated that extremely quickly because it generates as it goes. If you put a huge paragraph, it'll start reading immediately and then generate as it's playing the audio. So they do have a lot of confidence in their generation servers. I will say that. I can't tell that that's not being narrated by someone. Like, that's what it, it just sounds like it's being narrated by a person. A person is saying it. It does not sound like AI. It does not sound robotic. If you listen really closely with headphones on, you can kind of hear some splits in the audio maybe, but it's just... It's just way too good. Honestly, the story by ChatGPT was pretty good. Nice little message at the end. All right, so now we're going to have ChatGPT describe the Krusty Krab and the characters inside it from SpongeBob SquarePants as if it was written by HP Lovecraft. This is going to be interesting. It should sound scary. The Krusty Krab, located in the depths of the oceanic abyss, is a place of both wonder and terror. It is a place where the strange and the monstrous meet, where the laws of physics are defied and the boundaries of the mind are pushed to the brink. The first of these strange beings to greet the unwary visitor is the proprietor, Mr. Krabs. With his bulbous eyes and gnarled claws, he is a monstrosity in and of himself. His laughter, which echoes through the halls of the crusty crab, is a sinister, maddening sound that sends shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls. But the horrors of the Krusty Krab do not stop with Mr. Krabs. The chef, SpongeBob SquarePants, is a yellow sponge of indeterminate origin. His eyes, which seem to look right through the visitor, hold an eerie gleam, as if they contain some unspeakable knowledge. He moves about the kitchen with a fluid grace that is both unnerving and fascinating, his laughter ringing through the chambers like the tolling of a death knell. The Krusty Krab is not without its lesser terrors as well. The fry cook Squidward is a cephalopod of bizarre aspect, with a long, writhing tentacle where his nose should be. His hateful scowl is matched only by the eerie, soulless laughter that emanates from his being. The customers of the Krusty Krab are no less strange. The green and grizzled old sea captain, Captain Redbeard, is a figure of both awe and terror, with a voice that seems to rumble like thunder from the depths of the sea. The bumbling and blubbering tourist, Harold, is a being of indescribable horror, with a face that seems to shift and change before the very eyes of the beholder. And then there is the legendary creature known only as the Flying Dutchman. He is a wraith-like figure, with a face that is as ancient and timeless as the sea itself. His laughter, which seems to come from the very depths of the ocean, is a haunting sound that sends shivers down the spines of all who hear it. In conclusion, the Krusty Krab is a place of both wonder and terror, where the strange and the monstrous come together in a twisted dance of madness and horror. It is a place where the laws of physics are defied, and the boundaries of the mind are pushed to the brink. It is a place that should be approached with caution, for those who dare to enter may never return. Wow, okay, so... I mean, what can we say? It was fantastic. It, it did a great job. It sounds like a person's reading it. There's no and or buts about it. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's crazy how crystal clear and good it really is. Um, I did notice, I think in the last paragraph, there's a little bit of, you know, weirdness going on. Maybe. Maybe it's only because I'm wearing headphones that I can hear. But other than that, I mean, it's it's fantastic. It sounds like he's saying it with, like, 
a, a, almost a scary tone. It's it's very well toned. It's crazy how it's able to pick that up from the text itself. I don't know what's going on under the hood with this thing, but it's different than other Texas speech synthesis for sure. All right, so now that you guys really get a good idea of how good this thing is, let's start to talk about the fact you can do custom models. So I did a custom model of myself and we'll get into how you can make them. It's very easy to make custom models. This custom model of me is based off of my last video, the audio in my last video. I cut it up and, and put it in there and it's pretty good audio of me speaking. So how does it sound? You might be wondering. We'll go ahead and set the settings back to default. All right, we've got a little gummy bear description to test out and we'll see how it does with my voice. Again, I think the training data was pretty decent. I could be wrong, though. A gummy bear is a small, chewy candy that resembles a miniature teddy bear. It is typically about two centimeters in length and one centimeter in width, making it a bite-sized treat. The exterior of the gummy bear is smooth and shiny, with a translucent, gelatinous texture that is both firm and flexible. The gummy bear is typically brightly colored, with the most common colors being red, yellow, green, and blue. However, some gummy bears come in a variety of other colors, such as orange, purple, pink, and even clear. The coloring is evenly distributed throughout the gummy, giving it a uniform appearance. Now, my thoughts on this is a little bit different than the thoughts on the previous one. Yeah, it does resemble me, but it doesn't exactly sound just like me. It's not like uncanny, like, oh, that sounds like me. For example, I actually did AI training with Descript, and this is the software I use to actually edit my videos most of the time, is Descript. By the way, I do have an affiliate link for that down below, but it was able to replicate my voice, like, perfectly, like, nearly perfectly, and it, it was better than this, was able to replicate my voice. So I don't know if this is, like, an issue with the voice settings here. It sounds like it's inputting, like, a little bit of someone else's voice into mine, which is such a weird concept have to think about but maybe if I screw with these settings we can make things a little bit better since you know I was recording a YouTube video so I did a lot of variable speech in there maybe if we just kind of up these numbers a little bit it's going to do a little bit of a better job a gummy bear is a small chewy candy that resembles a miniature teddy bear it is typically about two centimeters in length and one centimeter in width making it a bite-sized treat yeah, see, that just does not sound like me. If I if I were to read this, I would read it. A gummy bear is a small, chewy candy that resembles a miniature teddy bear. It is typically about two centimeters in length and one centimeter in width, making it a bite-sized treat. It does not sound perfectly like me. It's close and it's uncanny in its resemblance, but it's not perfect. If we go up to the top of the page here, you can see this is the speech synthesis tab, obviously, but they have the voice lab, and that's where you can do the voice cloning. My training data maybe isn't the best for this speech synthesis. Maybe I screwed something up because I have heard some really, really good examples of voice cloning, and I'm not saying that this voice cloning is bad by any means. It's just not the best that I've heard. They've also got voice design, which is coming in February, and this is basically going to allow you to design entirely new voices using their generative model, and I'm very excited for that. I might have to make another video when this comes out this month, but voice cloning, it happens instantaneously. There's no, like, hour-long wait period for them to train some sort of a meta model on your voice. It just kind of happens within, like, a minute. And the weird thing is, like, the voice recording I submitted fits all of these different requirements here. One speaker over a minute long, does not contain any background noise. They also apparently have professional cloning that's only available on their enterprise plan, so this is, like, even better than what you're getting with this. By the way, to do any voice cloning at all, you do have to sign up for their plan, but the plan is actually very cheap, and we'll go over pricing pretty shortly. So, yes, this is the voice I did. It's known as Matt Vid Pro. When you click edit here, you can see I submitted a bunch of different voice clips from my last recorded video and they do make you do this little consent thing here saying that you have the rights to the voice clips that you're uploading and you agree not use them for illicit or fraudulent or harmful purposes obviously it's my own voice so i have my own consent to this but you know if you are checking this box and you're doing someone else's voice unless you get the proper consent from the other party like Obama's not giving you consent to clone his voice, so you're kind of breaking this when you do that. However, that doesn't mean people in my Discord haven't been cloning other people's voices when they really shouldn't have. We could take a listen to a few of those, though, and see what they sound like. So this first reproduction we're going to listen to is, of course, Two Minute Papers. Two Minute Papers is fantastic, by the way. A, a very, very good channel for learning about new technology. He's, he's a great guy. Let's take a listen to this generated audio clip. It sounds just like him. Hello there, fellow scholars. I mean, that could be from one of his YouTube videos for all we know. We have another sample here. Dear Two Minute Papers, 
This is Fellow Scholar with Video yet another time again. Today we will be looking at OpenAI's newest AI, Skynet. And that's, a, again, just a funny little AI reference, and it's not harmful in any way, but... Yeah, it sounds just like him in its synthesized speech. It's it's absolutely crazy. And it's weird because that sounds a lot more like him than my voice reproduction sounded like me. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong here and I'm not able to get a good reproduction. So this next one is Obama. Hello, this is a call from the White House. I would like to order pepperoni pizza. <laughs> no, it's just Obama's ordering a pizza kind of a thing. And again, the people who are actually creating these models here don't have the consent of Two Minute Papers or Obama uh, to create that. So they are violating that terms of service there. They've also got an API, which is really, really nice for developers. Love to see that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some pricing. So I actually did go ahead and sign up for a subscription for this. If you want to do the voice cloning, you have to do at least the starter minimum subscription. This is what you get with the free plan. Zero dollars forever. You don't have to pay anything. No commercial license, unfortunately, on the long form speech synthesis, but you do get 10,000 characters per month, which is a lot. You actually do get API access so you can start building and working things in a project to see if it's something you want to include in it. You do have to attribute everything to 11labs.io. But it's completely free for you to mess around with. You can do a lot of testing to see if you like this thing for 10,000 characters per month, which is pretty good. So this is the one that I bought here. This is the starter thing. It's only five bucks per month. That's not much at all. And it is just speech synthesis. So I think that's pretty fairly priced. And you also get your first month for free. So I haven't even paid anything for that. And I can create up to 10 different custom voices and see if I like them for a month. And then I pay five bucks after that month is over. So, you know, we'll see if I keep my subscription. Long form speech synthesis, commercial license included, up to 30,000 characters per month, so that's three times the characters and you get with the free one, up to 10 custom voices, and you don't have to attribute anything to 11labs.io. So then they've got some big boy plans down here. 22 bucks a month for content creators seeking compelling narration for their content. You know, this is, you're starting to really use this as a core uh, part of your production process, let's say if you're a creator, 100,000 characters per month included. If you need more than that, you can do 30 cents per 1,000 characters after that, which I think is pretty fair, up to 30 custom voices. And you've also got an $100 a month plan, and like this is gets even crazier. This is like independent publishers, apparently, you know, people that want to create audiobooks. Maybe if you're an author, that's what you would do. Turn all your books into audiobooks immediately. No narration required. Crazy, right? 500,000 characters per month. That's about 10 hours of generated audio, 24 uh, cents per a thousand characters after that 60 custom voices and then they even have this 330 dollar per month plan for like businesses like i don't even know what you would do i mean i guess if you were trying to do audiobooks or you could do this growing business one for 330 bucks per month two million characters per month included 40 hours of generated audio and then again after that enterprise level so this is the big business stuff it's custom everything essentially whatever you want Whatever tech they have, they'll, they'll give it to you. But yeah, I mean, if you're just like a little AI enthusiast, it's five bucks per month to clone your voice, and apparently it works perfectly for everyone but me, so maybe I, I screwed something up. Yeah, I think the pricing, it's not egregious at all. The technology is fantastic, and this is definitely worth checking out because it has quite a lot of capabilities even just for free. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'm Matt VidPro AI, and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you join the Discord for the latest and greatest. See you in the next video.